How's it going everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch and I'm back with another review. Today it's a game called Hollow Knight which I purchased with my own hard-earned cash on the eShop. I love Metroidvania type games but is this one worth your hard-earned cash? Let's jump into the review and find out. The story is very much left open to interpretation and is purposely kept vague which is the intention given that Hollow Knight is exploring an abandoned kingdom long forgotten. You start off in the town of Dirtmouth which is a small place which lies above Hammer Nest. It's clear that the residents are affected by something and it seems to be to do with the temple and that's where the whole intrigue begins. Before you know it you're thrust deep into an adventure where you can't wait to uncover more of what's going on. Like a good book that never gives too much away but just enough to keep you wanting more is the only way I can describe it. While much of it is told through its environments, residents and secrets that you as the player discover, much of it will depend on how you interpret what's going on as nothing is in your face obvious which I really liked. Hollow Knight is a 2D action platformer and you start out with the nail as your weapon which is funny in itself seeing as this thing looks like a massive sword and is almost bigger than our protagonist. Like any good platformer you can run left, right, jump on all platforms and take down enemies that get in your way. Some of these enemies will charge at you, others will shoot at you and there's those that are going to try and jump on you and you know you can just move past them if you wish but then you're not going to get that precious geo and we'll come to that in a sec. Each hit causes you damage in which you will lose one of your five masks that you begin with. With each kill an enemy will lose their soul and the player gains and stores this in their soul vessel. Using focus by holding A you can recharge your mask shards if you have taken a hit. In essence you have five masks, lose the soul within all five due to getting hit too many times and not recharging the empty ones and you're finished. The game is difficult so believe me you'll lose these quite quickly. Now you can also find lifeblood masks, these are blue and allow you to take an extra hit from an enemy however these disappear as they have a one off use and cannot be replenished using the focus meter. Hollow Knight is a joy to control, the character feels responsive in both combat and platforming, the movement system is superb especially as there's quite a bit of aerial combat later on. You can slash in four directions, up, down, left and right and slashes have quite a wide arc. The system for the most part works really well and the control scheme both in handheld, docked mode with a pro controller is great. Enemies also drop Geo which is the game's currency and can be used to buy all sorts of specialized items. One of the key items at first is purchasing a map. As you delve deeper into the kingdom you risk meeting one of the game's bosses or dying either by enemies or falling into a number of traps placed throughout this world. If you do perish you lose all of the money that you've built up which is quite a punishment but one that you'll learn to manage. You'll also then crack your soul vessel which holds around a quarter of soul when cracked so it's a big disadvantage. Now you can continue from the last bench you rested at which acts like a checkpoint so to speak and finding these benches replenishes your health. It's also about finding the place you died and going back there which gives you a chance to defeat Shade and to take back all the money that you lost and restore that precious soul vessel so you can hold more soul. Reminds me a little bit of Dark Souls in that way. The game is challenging and managing that risk versus reward is all part of this game's charm. Now along the way you'll meet over 100 characters who each give something more to you to tell you about this world. Now if you've played Metroidvania games before then you'll know you can explore anywhere you like as long as you have the relevant skill or item to open up certain areas. You will have to do a number of things to open up these areas as there's also a handy transport system which you'll find quite early on. Bosses play a big part in this game, often they block you to the next area and you need certain skills to beat certain bosses. I came up against some of them and met my demise very quickly but I really liked how they stood in front of an area I needed to get to sometimes, kind of like a mini boss. It felt, felt like they were saying get past me if you think you're hard enough. Often I would take one look at these beasts, assess the situation and come back when I knew I had a better chance or the relevant skill or loadout to get past them. Now you'll work out whether you can or not pretty early. For example one of the guardians blocks all of your swipes early on. 
However, when you unlock the Vengeful Spirit skill, you're able to unleash this to beat the Guardian as an early example. Other bosses, if you come across them, you'll have no choice but to find them in a room like the False Knight. I found these fights to be enjoyable and that's because you really felt like you deserved every single win. Each boss gives you a good, fair fight and all are challenging. Yes, of course, you can learn their patterns, but it takes you quite a while to do so. There are 30 bosses to keep you occupied, which is a lot and I appreciated it as a player. Some will need you to have the right build using the various charms of which there are many to collect and discover. It's fascinating as you can literally build your knight mixing together whatever charms you like, making your knight unique. You may need a charm to give you a ranged attack or applying speed. The more powerful the charm, the more slots they're going to take up. And what's just unbelievable is the amount of content this game just keeps on giving. Keep on exploring, it keeps giving you more. Put in over 30 hours and you may just about 100% this, but sure enough, you're bound to miss something along the way. A side quest, a charm, or even a whole area such as the vastness of this game. You can also mark all of the places of interest on your map, but at a cost of geo. Nothing is free here, that's for sure. The game makes you work for everything, and it's that sense that I found to be a really rewarding experience. There are various abilities you can gain later which allow you to explore differing areas like the double jump as one example. The map feels huge though with lots of interconnected areas begging to be explored and secrets to be found. And if you're someone that loves adventure and exploration, this game is certainly for you. The game isn't perfect though, then again in my eyes nothing ever is. If you don't have a map, it's easy to get lost, but I'd say that's like most Metroidvania games I have ever played anyway. You know what to expect. There's a little bit of back backtracking from time to time and some players may not like going over the same areas. The game is also difficult, but again, it begs to be explored and while it may frustrate at times, I think many will persevere, especially for this game. In terms of audio, the music is just beautiful. It's incredibly subtle, enchanting, beautifully sounding. It's the sound effects which really sound fantastic too. Each drip of water, each swipe of that nail, each footstep makes you feel like you're there somehow. It creates such an eerie but wonderful atmosphere all at the same time. When you come across a boss, the music will change to something a little bit more daunting and menacing coming across characters while not voice acted, speaking their own little tongue, which makes the game even more charming. In terms of performance in this game, it works beautifully at 60 frames per second in both handheld and in docked. And what can I say about these visuals other than them being so impressive? Each of the areas seems to have a life of its own, but there is so much beauty to discover in this world. Take for example, the area which looks like a jungle underground. Leaves fly around as you walk past them. The little details are always moving in the background. I was stunned at how many unique areas there are to discover, each with their own theme and enemies to accompany the area, of which there are many as well. It's amazing that each area was hand drawn and how these areas have been interwoven together. Just wonderful. The characters are also personable and it just shows through with their fantastic little animations and just in the way they're drawn everything just fits sublimely well. I could go on and on and on. Let me say in terms of value, this is the bargain of the century. I kid you not, this game is priced outrageously low. In fact, it's so well priced that you could say it's immune to criticism here because the value for money is ridiculous. You get so much content, so many hours of gameplay, so many secrets to find, and that's just in the gameplay itself. It does not even take into consideration the beautiful art style and wonderfully composed music. There are plenty of abilities and upgrades you can find, which is all gonna take you a good while. And even when you do complete it, you're gonna come back for more to 100% the game. There is a first for everything in life, and this is one of those firsts. Hollow Knight is a marvel of a game on the Nintendo Switch, a game made by just three people, I may add, which in my view, based on the way we rate games here at Switch Watch, is an absolute masterpiece. Now, nothing is perfect from my point of view, but any criticisms you can throw at this game 
is just nitpicking. Yes, it can be difficult. Yes, you can get lost at times, but that's part of most Metroidvania type games. This game is such a joy to play, such a joy to explore, so wonderful to look at and listen to, and a game which I would have gladly played triple four. Such is the ridiculous value that you get from it. There's only one thing I can do in this situation, ladies and gentlemen, and that is award the first ever 10 out of 10 from Switchwatch. An absolute masterpiece, essential purchase. Make sure you get this in your collection today. If you enjoyed this video though guys, I'd really appreciate it if you left a thumbs up. Also really appreciate it if you're a new watcher, why not hit that subscribe button for more reviews like this one. We've made over 300 videos now and there's plenty of content for you to watch on our channel. I'd love to know your thoughts on this one, leave me a comment down below. And the most exciting thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to give this game away. And the way you can enter this competition is very simple. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Turn on that bell notification and when our next video pops up, all you need to do is be the first one to comment on that new video. The first person that comments on the video, the new one that's coming out, I'm not going to tell you when, might be tomorrow, might be the next day. First person to comment on that video will win a copy of Hollow Knight. So that's a copy of Hollow Knight guys, okay? So good luck. Turn that notification on so you know when our video is released so you have a chance of commenting first. And we'll give that copy to the first person that comments. I hope that's all really clear, but I'll put that in the description. As always, I want to thank all of our existing subscribers that continue to support our channel. And don't forget to check out all the latest news on Nintendo Switch stuff and reviews if you want to read them at www.switchwatch.com. .co.uk. I'm Juan Romero from Switchwatch, and of course, I'll see you again on the next one. Take care.